this first programming course, every problem is uh, one function. And uh, then, so uh, when uh, the function is uh, given the arguments uh, to solve the problem, so after it has returned the answer, some kind of imaginary reset button gets pressed. Uh, the next instance of the problem comes uh, uh, as a completely new one, and uh, the functions don't need to remember anything from the past. This next example, among a bunch of other things, demonstrates uh, remembering the past. Uh, so uh, we're gonna be writing some utility functions to quickly generate and calculate uh, prime numbers for us. We're gonna be uh, doing the space-time uh, trade-off uh, now to the direction for optimizing for time. So we're gonna be remembering the prime numbers uh, that we have found. So now uh, in the script uh, we define a name uh, not inside the function but uh, inside the script. So in the, when the script is run in its namespace we have a prime list and uh, the naming convention starting a name from the underscore when somebody imports uh, this primes module. So this is now designed to be imported uh, so that somebody could uh, use this uh, for things that uh, they can access the names that are defined uh, like for example gate prime the function this is intended for the module users and uh, then uh, is prime so determining whether uh, integer is prime but then these names uh, that start with the underscore or a double underscore uh, they're not uh, the internal implementation not intended uh, for the outside users so now we have this prime list uh, object uh, inside uh, this uh, script. So initialize it uh, to some known values to prime the pump. Uh, okay, so sometimes I like to put dad jokes here, so that's just me. But the uh, next uh, really big uh, important thing. So I previously emphasized that uh, the difference between a list and a set is that uh, the set uh, can quickly tell you whether something is a member of it or not. Whereas asking whether a list contains a given element, uh, then uh, there's no better way in general than uh, looping through the elements one by one and uh, checking if that's the one that you're looking for. So if you do this uh, all the time for a million element list, so your program's gonna be spending a lot of time doing that one. But uh, the thing is, uh, like uh, if, if your sequence elements are known to be sorted, like uh, they are in here, and uh, we're gonna be generating the prime list uh, to guarantee the sorted order. So the sortedness is power. So we know that we like to keep things in order. So along a road, uh, how the buildings are numbered, they're just not uh, given random numbers, but the, the numbers are in sorted order so uh, then you can uh, see which way you're going and uh, in a library the books are not randomly in the cells but uh, they are uh, that's an example of a hashing for an algorithm course hash by category and then uh, within the category sort uh, in alphabetical order uh, the sortedness uh, in a phone book uh, old timey phone book imagine I need to update this reference but I don't know what to update it to. Somebody's looking for the name so they don't use uh, the ordinary linear search uh, start from the first name Aaron Aronson or whatever that is and uh, then keep going until uh, they come to the name or uh, go past uh, where the name would have been. So of course uh, so uh, we, when you have an old timey phone book so you can uh, zero into the name in a, in a very much faster fashion. Also notice the asymmetry. If you're given a name, you can quickly find the corresponding value. But when you're given a value, you don't have any, any efficient way to find a name. And this is basically the same idea as the dictionaries in Python. So you can get from a val a key quick quickly to the value, but uh, from a value there is no uh, way to, rather than the brute force uh, to find the corresponding key. But sortedness is power. And uh, searching in a sorted uh, sequence, so what is uh, what is called the binary search, but uh, then in the Python standard library, so that's called the bisection algorithm. So we import the bisect module. So bisect module, as you'll see, has a handy functions to quickly determine a position in the sequence where some element would be maintaining the sorted order. So suppose we binary search the element 5 in this sequence. So it would give us the position, uh, this one. If we're, if we're looking for an element that doesn't exist, like let's say 4, 
it would uh, give us the same position, the position where four needs to be inserted so that the rest of the list uh, remains in order. So a four is greater than three, uh, but uh, less than five, so it would be here. So what is uh, binary search? Uh, because it uses the important uh, computational principle, so this is the best luxury that will ever get uh, repeated halving. So uh, to solve a problem, cut the problem in half in uh, one uh, Swiss of uh, imaginary sort, and uh, then uh, discard one of the halves and uh, continue with the other one. So this kind of, uh, uh, if you repeatedly cut something in half, so now the exponential growth is working for you instead of against you. So even if you had the entire universe, what was that 10 to the power of 85 particles or something. So uh, con converting the power of 2, so that would be roughly 2 to the power of uh, 260 or something. Uh, so the conversion factor uh, 3.5. Uh, so then, anyway, so what that says that even if you had the entire universe to chop down, uh, 260 chops uh, uh, in half and you end up with a single particle. So this binary search, like it just uh, cannot be slow ever. It is never gonna be the bottleneck of, uh, of the rest of the algorithm. So this kind of a running time that grows only logarithmically, the inverse of exponential uh, as, the, as the input gets longer. So in a real computer, so we can pretend that the logarithmic running time is uh, constant because uh, the n can never be so big that the uh, that uh, it log n would be any kind of relevant thing. All right, so now, uh, the bisection, as we build up the sorted list of primes, allows us to quickly determine whether uh, some integer is a prime or not. And uh, then here we have another internal setting, so that to make sure that, uh, uh, that uh, this list the same grow and fill in the entire memory. So, so what is the largest uh, prime that we can now be storing? Okay, so now the internal utility version of the of the function. So we have a is prime to determine from the outside, and then we have a internal is prime that then it works in tandem with the internal function expand primes. So we're gonna be expanding this prime list if it's the the largest last number isn't uh, big enough, but uh, then this happens in tandem. So because to determine whether a number is a prime number, so we're gonna be needing some existing numbers. So this uh, is prime and the expand primes are gonna be calling each other. So we, again, we can reason that uh, if uh, an integer uh, has a factor, it has a factor uh, at most equal to the square root. So uh, when uh, determining whether n is a prime number, the trial division needs to look up uh, divisors only up to this high. So now, if uh, this list isn't long enough, then we're gonna be expanding uh, the, the list until uh, it is long enough. And uh, then, so to determine whether, uh, whether this n is prime, so loop through the prime list, terminating once you find uh, number that is uh, too big, the uh, divisor uh, is uh, greater than the square root, or if you find a divisor. So either way, you get uh, your answer. Expand primes. So uh, uh, they take the last known prime and uh, add two to it. So this is gonna keep going until it uh, reaches uh, the uh, value, uh, value n. So as long as uh, the n is greater, than the last uh, item in the prime list. So uh, just keep uh, try asking. So if, uh, if n is a prime, extend the prime list accordingly, uh, either way increment by two. So eventually this is gonna expand uh, up to n. So expand primes is calling is prime and is prime is calling expand primes. And then the public functions, so is prime, so uh, the better uh, uh, handle the uh, definition for the negative numbers, uh, no negative number is a prime, so that uh, every integer has a unique uh, prime factorization. If uh, this n is uh, uh, within the range of prime max, then we're gonna do the hard work now, so that we can rest uh, easy later. So suppose n is like uh, close to million or something, so then we're gonna build up the list uh, all the way that high, but once we have it, so all our future queries 
are gonna be very efficient. So uh, expand the list of primes until it's guaranteed to contain n uh, if n is prime and uh, if n is not prime so then contains something that is greater than n and uh, now the binary search the bisect left uh, so in the prime list uh, find the position where n would be if n were in the list. So then either it is there or we, we find the gap where it would fall to, but because we know that the, the way that we construct this, there's not gonna be any gaps in there. So the, 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 the yes, no answer. So then we can just look at the, that element in the prime list and return the answer. So this, if n is small enough, that we're gonna be storing prime numbers that high. Otherwise, well, well, then, then now we can now be, so we can now look up to the one uh, trillion. So then uh, in, if uh, we do the trial division, so the square root of trillion is million. So we're uh, trying all the prime numbers up to million. So if there is a factor, we will find one. And uh, another utility function, the gate prime, that, uh, well, this is now very, very easy because we've done all the hard work already. So because we are explicitly constructing the list of known primes with no gaps inside the list. So if the, the so expand the list of primes until it's guaranteed to contain at least the k number. So then we can just look up and return. So after that, every k the prime lookup is constant time. Now, for demonstration purposes, so this uh, handy thing again, so when a script is uh, run uh, from a main, uh, so by itself and not imported, so if a script is being imported, so then its uh, name is gonna be something else, but if it's a uh, this special constant, so it then is the top level module and, uh, and then is executing without any any creator of its own. So then uh, in that case, uh, we, we, so uh, nobody would run this until unless they they wanna learn well something and uh, then uh, we, we can demonstrate here's a list comprehension and uh, then we'll print out uh, how long uh, the li list of has become and then uh, asking for ever increasing positions so looking at the output so uh, the, uh, the prime list always expands uh, as far as it uh, needs to and uh, the prime numbers, notice that almost 100,000 prime number is, uh, is only 1.2 million. So uh, prime numbers, notice they're actually much denser uh, among all integers than most people assume. Like uh, ignoring the, the, all the even numbers just uh, out of the gate. So uh, 6 million odd numbers and uh, like every sixth one is a prime. So uh, uh, prime numbers are, are pretty common. You don't need to poke around for very long. Uh, to hit the uh, one by randomness and uh, then so uh, then uh, another way that we can test within this bounder is the famous uh, Mersenne prime numbers so prime numbers that are some power of two minus one so some of those are primes and uh, some are not so we can uh, now ask uh, our uh, uh, prime identifier we find uh, the same list of uh, Mersenne primes that was given in Wikipedia, but uh, as we go higher from this, uh, then we'll see that the uh, inefficiencies of the trial division, the, it, they're gonna, uh, they gonna overwhelm us, uh, then if we wanna primarily the calculations with the much bigger and astronomical and uh, uh, cryptographic level numbers, so then we just need a lot more uh, uh, better algorithmic approaches.